Lofton's class at Evelina McFadden Middle School. Today she is teaching the class about ancient African civilizations. The students do not know, but they are about to go on a life-changing journey. Ring, ring, ring. The school bell rings. The rowdy children begin storming into Miss Lofton's class and take their seats. Michelle, a pretty fashionista, is texting on her cell phone. Percy, a young scholar, is reading a book. Bunchy, a popular basketball, basketball player, and Chen, a cool skateboarder, are throwing paper balls at each other. Jesse, a popular cheerleader, is looking at herself in the mirror. Miss Lawson calms the room and grabs the attention of the children by simply saying, quiet. These are the characters right here. It's just Michelle, Percy, Chen, Jesse, and Bunchy. Can anyone name one of the ancient African civilizations? asked Miss Lofton. There is a short pause. It appears no one can answer the question. Percy complains, why do we need to, to learn history? Miss Lofton responds, well, Percy, if you do not know where you come from, then you do not know where you are going, says the class in unison. Also, history shapes how we view ourselves in the world, in the world says Miss Lofton. Ring, 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 the school bell signals the end of class. As the students begin to leave, Ms. Lofton shouts, Bunchy, Percy, Michelle, Chen, and Jesse, please stay for a moment. Walking toward Ms. Lofton, Michelle asks, did we do something wrong? Ms. Lofton replies, no, Michelle. I kept you after class to give you a further understanding of what we talked about today. Now, says Ms. Lofton, as she raises her arms, take a seat, open your minds, and let me take your minds on a journey, journey. The room begins to shake. Objects move, and the heads of the, and the hands on the classroom clock begin to spin. Clock spin backwards. Mystical winds surround the children. A journey whirlwind has arrived to take the children on a mail trip. The journey whirlwind takes the children to a mysterious land and places them alongside a beautiful river, with reflections from the sun shining brightly in the sky. What happened, guys? Where are we? Exclaims Percy in a frantic tone. Bunchy replies, chill with the questions, Percy. We know just as little as you do. Unexpectedly, the children meet the children are approached by a teenage boy with braids wearing a white tunic. Hotel, my name is Ramesses. I was named in honor of Ramses the Second. What are your names? One by one the children introduce themselves. Percy explains he was named in honor of Huey P. Newton. Bunchy states that he was named after Bunchy Carter, and Michelle tells Ramesses that she was named after Michelle Obama. What is this? What is the name of this land? asks Michelle. Africa, the birthplace of humanity. Ramesses proudly replies, Where is Africa? asks Percy. Ramesses pulls a scroll made of papyrus from his pocket. He enrolls the scroll, which displays the world map. Here, says Ramesses, while pointing to Africa on the map. It is the second largest continent in the world, and we are beside the Nile River, the largest river in the world. Allow me to show you my land, says Ramesses. The children agree, and the group begins to venture along a pathway beside the Nile River. Ramesses, where are we going? asks Shen. Ramesses replies, we are going to explore several places in Africa. Our first stop will be Kemi, daughter of the South, land of the Black. When the children arrive in Kemi, Ramesses takes them to Lower Kemi to see the Step Pyramid located in Sakura. <coughs> the children are amazed by the enormous size of the pyramid. This structure was designed by Imhotep during the reign of King Zosar, and it is comprised of six mastabas, explains Ramesses. Next, Ramesses takes the children to see the pyramids in Giza. While the while the other children gaze in awe at the pyramid, Percy turns to Ramesses and asks, How did the people of Kemet build pyramids without using any modern technology? Ramesses answers, They used their knowledge of mathematics and science to construct the pyramids. These people understood astronomy so well that many of the pyramids are aligned with certain stars. The group departs Giza and is led by Ramesses to the Hall of the Pharaohs, which is located in the new a major city located in Lower Kemet. Ramesses, what is this? asked Jesse, as the children stare at the mysterious symbols on the wall. This is our writing system, called Medjunetter, explains Ramesses. What does it say? asked Percy. 
The Medjur Netter says, I know what is in my heart, which is the same as knowing yourself, as far as Robin sees. They enter the Hall of the Pharaohs. As Ramesses guides the children down a narrow walkway, they see gigantic statues against the walls of the room. Ramesses explains, these are all the rulers of Kemet, from the first to the thirtieth dynasty. Pointing to a head made of stone resting on a short pillar, Michelle asks, what is this, Ramesses? Ramesses explains, this is King Narmer, the first ruler of the first dynasty of Kemet. Ramesses guides the children to another room filled with large statues of pharaohs. The group first sees a large golden statue of a teenage looking pharaoh. Michelle asks, who is this? He looks young. Ramesses responds, this is King Tut. He was about your age when he began his reign. While the other children gaze at the statue, Bunchy thinks to himself, I guess you are never too young to be powerful. After moving to the next statue, Ramesses says, says, this is King Hetchesef, one of the most powerful female kings. She expanded the trade and oversaw impressive building projects. While Bunchy, Percy, Chen, and Jesse stare in amazement at the statue, Michelle thinks to herself, if she can rule a nation, I can rule one too. Next, they see a statue of Tutmos III. Tutmos III was the nephew of King Hetchesef. He was an amazing warrior king who greatly expanded Kemet explains Ramesses. The children start asking Ramesses questions about the adventures of Tutmos III. Meanwhile, Percy thinks to himself, with proper training, practice, and courage, I too can be a warrior king. As the children walk a little further, they see another large statue. This is King Akhenaten. He worshipped the deity Ram he, wor he worshipped the deity Aten and required his people to do the same, explains Ramesses. While the other children observe the statue, Bunchy's imagination runs wild about becoming a powerful king one day. After the children explore Kemet, they travel to West Africa to learn about three great empires, Ghana, Mali, and Sungai. When the children arrive in Ghana, they are shocked to see the enormous amounts of gold being transported by carriers. Wow, that's a lot of gold, Michelle says to Ramesses. The rest of the children nod in agreement. Ramesses explains, Ghana is known as the Gold Coast because this land is filled with gold. The people of Ghana often, often trade their gold to acquire unique goods from other nations. Next, Ramesses leads the children to the kingdom of Mali. While in Mali, they visit three cities, Janae, Gayo, and lastly, Timbuktu. Ramesses explains, many people travel to these cities to attend the great centers of learning and to trade their unique goods. Chen says to the group, these cities rem remind me of the large cities in our country like New York and Los Angeles where lots of trade occurs. While in Timbuktu, the group visits the Great Library. This building contains sacred books and scrolls written by scholars from all over the continent of Africa. The sacred texts discuss various topics such as science, mathematics, history, philosophy, and more. The group enters the Great Library and sees rows of books and bookcases filled with books and scrolls. Ramesses walks the children to a bookcase, scans the shelf, and pulls from it a huge book called The Dawn of Ghana to the Fall of Sungai. This book lists all of the West African rulers and is rare because in West Africa, history is traditionally preserved and taught by griots, says Ramesses. Ramesses opens the heavy book, turns to a page, and reads aloud. When Sunni Adekita ruled Mali, he led his army to many war victories that expanded the empire. He was a great military leader, just like Tutmos III, says Ramesses. Ramesses turns the page and reads aloud about the nephew of Sunni Adekita, Mansa Musa. He was an extremely wealthy king. He gave away a lot of gold as charity, especially during his Hajj to Mecca, says Ramesses. Why did he go to Mecca, asks Jesse. Ramesses replies, Mansa Musa was a devout Muslim, and this was customary for his religion. Ramesses turns a few pages and displays two of the most powerful rulers in the history of Sungai. To, this left, uh, to the left is a picture of Sunni Ali, the founder of Sungai. To the right is an image of his successor, Askiya Muhammad. He continues, 
Sunny Ali expanded Sungai by taking over the land of the fallen empire of Mali. Askia Muhammad expanded Sungai, making it the largest empire in Africa during this time. He also created new laws based on the Quran. After learning about the West African Kingdom, the children traveled to the central region of Africa. They entered the northern part of the Congo Kingdom. The group travels through thick rainforests and sees plenty of exotic wildlife. While in the forest, the children see a group of petite people gathering food. Percy asks, who are they? Pointing to the people. They are the Twa people, says Ramesses. The Twa people are thought to be the oldest group of people inhabiting Central Africa and are successful hunter-gatherers. <clears throat> the group leaves the Congo region and travels south to Zimbabwe. When they reach the southeastern hills of Zimbabwe, they see a gigantic stone structure. Wow, what is that? Asked Chen while pointing to the structure. This is the great enclosure built by the people of Zimbabwe. They are master stone masons. The last stop on the journey was South Africa. Ramesses introduces the children to members of the Zulu nation who tell them stories about their fearless warrior king named Shaka Zulu. They explain how Shaka rose to power and expanded their nation by conquering many tribes. How did he defeat these tribes, asked Bunchy. Shaka created new battle tactics that gave his warriors an edge over their enemies, exclaims Ramesses. Ramesses takes the children back to the starting point of their adventure. I hope you enjoyed exploring my land. Now I must go, says Ramesses. But we want to learn more, Percy says with excitement. Ramesses leaves the children with these last words before he departs. Continue to learn and seek the truth, for it will set you free. The children say their goodbyes and thank Ramesses for his guidance. We have been traveling all day without one sip of water, complains Jesse. And it is so hot out here. As Chen, as he wipes his, as he wipes sweat from his forehead, let's drink from the Nile River," suggests Percy. The children rush to the riverbank, dip their hands into the clear, flowing water, and begin to drink. Powerful winds surround the children. A large white and black clock appears amidst the winds. The hands on the clock are spinning forward. The journey whirlwind has returned to transport the children back to the present. The children join hands and depart Africa. Although this, this is the end of their journey, the lessons learned during the mail trip will never be forgotten. The journey world will return the children to the beginning of Miss Lawton's class. They are in their assigned seats this time, ready to learn. Miss Lawton asked the class, can anyone name one of the ancient kingdoms of Africa? Percy, Bunchy, Jesse, Chen, and Michelle raised their hands with excitement. Miss Lawton first calls on Percy, who tells the class about Kemet and Emotep. Michelle speaks about Ghana and its enormous gold trade. Jesse talks about the great rulers of Mali and Sungai. Chen shares what he knows about the Congo region and the Twa people. Lastly, Bunchy tells the class about Zimbabwe, Shaka Zulu, and the Zulu nation. Ring, ring, ring. The school bell rings signaling the end of class. Bunchy, Jesse, Percy, Chen, and Michelle meet at the door to talk. They each share their experience in Africa. However, they all believe their journey was a dream. Before the children exit the classroom, Miss Lofton says, Hotep, followed by a wink, a clear sign that their journey was real. The children are surprised, yet they simply reply, Hotep, Miss Lofton, the end.